This year's Boston Marathon in April was bittersweet for many of the 36,000 participants. It was only a year earlier that the race was interrupted by a double bombing. People gathered along the route to pay respect to the three people killed by the explosions and the police officer who was killed during the manhunt for the suspects a few days later. VOA's Carolyn Prasuti went to Boston last year to cover the bombings, and she was there again for the one-year anniversary. We talked about what she saw and how the city is still affected. At first glance, it looks like a typical marathon. But the Boston Marathon is forever changed. America. Because of what happened last year near the finish line. At Monday's start, a moment of silence for the victims of the double bombings. Later, the national anthem and a flyover of Army ambulance helicopters that provided medical support after the bombings. Carolyn, you were in Boston this year for the first marathon since the attacks last year. What was the mood like? Well, it was definitely different than last year. I mean, the first thing that hit us was that we had never seen Boylston Street as a marathon, set up for a marathon, because when we went there last year, it was littered with what everyone had left behind. And of course, Boylston Street is that last stretch before the finish line. You know, we saw all kinds of debris there. This year, there were runners, even the day before. People were taking pictures with the finish line. They were just excited to be there in the spirit of sports. What would you say has, is something that impacted you from that experience of being able to compare those two visits? Well, Boston as a city has changed. Um, their marathon will never be the same, although they would love for it to be just a normal marathon with the emphasis on who wins the marathon. But there will always be this memory of this past year, of what happened during the 2013 marathon. Throughout the year, Bostonians healed and vowed to come back stronger in 2014. They did and celebrated an historic race. There's the line, he's across. Meb Kifleski became the first American in 31 years to win the Boston Marathon. And a lot of these people were people who had been there last year when the bombings struck. So why was it, you talked to many of them, why was it that they wanted to return? It wasn't that they wanted to return. Um, somebody said to me, I had to return. Mm. She said, it wouldn't have been right for me not to return because it was something that I didn't finish. She got stopped, this one person that I talked to got stopped um, just a few miles before the finish line. And she said, it's unfinished business. She said, I had to be here and I'm not going to let a crime get in the way of what I need to finish. And I think Boston as a whole felt that they needed to take back this race, take back this race from the negativity that surrounded it last year. And they wanted to reclaim it, reclaim the race, reclaim the finish line, and certainly to reclaim their tradition of more than 100 years of holding this marathon. What kinds of steps were taken for this year's race to ensure people were safe? Extreme security. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, 36, 3,500 police officers were on hand and you could not bring anything into the area of the finish line. Even the media, you know, we're used to huge bags carrying batteries and cables and whatever. Nobody could carry anything. We you were couldn't carry bags. Only clear bags. A clear bag to show exactly what was in it or a fanny pack, something you wear around your waist. Very small bags, but even that, you had to go through a special checkpoint. So there were bagless check lines and then there were bag lines. You mm -hmm. could get through so much quicker if you didn't have anything that you were carrying. There was an image you said when you were there that will stick with you from this marathon experience. What is that? Last year, um, Celeste Corcoran and her daughter, Sydney, were standing on the sidelines and they were waiting for Celeste's friend to come along when the bombs went off. Celeste lost both of her legs and Sydney had a serious injury to her thigh. Mm. So this is mother and daughter, both had hospital beds together. And this year, that friend finished the race mm. and she finished the race with both of them joining her during the last block on Boylston Street. Wow. So it's that picture of Celeste going through with her prosthetic legs and her daughter and Celeste's friend all holding hands and crossing that finish line. 
Thanks again to VOA reporter Carolyn Pursuti. Now, the surviving Sarnayev brother suspected in the Boston Marathon bombings remains in a U.S. federal prison awaiting trial later this year.